Hey folks, I'm Nick Hawks with Gristle King, walking you through some of the last steps to building your helium hotspot that goes off grid. So I've got uh, the box here. Now this is our enclosure that we're gonna use. And one of the big steps here is drilling the right holes in the right places. So I've got a couple holes up here. Um, I've marked them, I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, these are quarter inch holes. So I'm keeping everything, uh, what is it, Imperial for this one. So quarter inch holes, that's for the cell antennas. So two little, uh, what to say, SMA connectors will punch there and those will be um, bulkhead connectors that they slide all the way through and there's plenty of threads for the, uh, the other side to thread onto. Down here, I've got a 5 8 inch hole and this guy is for my solar cable. Um, I've marked these on this box just so you can see them. I don't normally mark them, but uh, just in case I forgot when I was talking. And then on this side, I'm doing something that's kind of new that I've learned from one of my clients. We actually put together a bunch of these. And this is also a 5 8 inch hole, and this is for an N-type connector. So typically when you get your um, hot spots, your connector will be a tiny little RPSMA thing. But this is our little N-type thing. So I will see if I can get myself out of the... There we go. Cool. So that's our end type. And then this is the little IPEX side that goes onto the actual hotspot. Um, you'll see those if you open your hotspot up. I wouldn't be too afraid to open your hotspot up, especially if you got a Rack V2. It's just a Raspberry Pi inside or a Bobcat. I just opened up Bobcat the other day. This little IPEX guy uh, connects to that. And then this guy can go through that uh, giant hole. And that just gives us a nicer connection for our antenna fittings. And let's see, oh, there are five more holes that are 16th inch, you can't see them, but there's a little pattern of them on the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, and those are just little drain holes. On this particular box, I'm not gonna put any, uh, in, sorry, I'm not gonna put any vents in it. I'm just gonna let this thing be relatively sealed, although there are those five holes on the bottom, and it, of course, it's not waterproof, it's just weatherproof. So all those holes that you saw are gonna have um, little, uh, what is it, rubber washers around them or some kind of sealant, maybe silicone sealant, but that's it. So the holes are drilled. Uh, next thing is um, laying everything out on the little perf board on the inside. And I think I've got that around here somewhere. Yep. Right here. And so I'll lay everything out on here. So my RET240 goes here. Uh, my little Pi Zero, your Raspberry Pi, whatever it is. In fact, I've got, I just had it around here. There we go. This is for a Bobcat miner. So you can see that uh, in this case, my box is a little bit too big for a Bobcat, but you can get the next size up. Put your Bobcat up there, and then the uh, battery goes on the bottom with your charge controller, and Robert Sifal's brother. That's it. All right, uh, yeah, stay posted, and we'll, uh, we'll finish this thing off. Okay, so now we've got our box laid out. We've got pretty much everything in it. It's still uh, messy. I don't have everything bolted down, but this should give you a pretty good idea pretty good idea of what's going to happen. So we've got our battery right here. This is our little 20 amp hour battery. I know I'm going small. Um, I've talked about that before. We got our, our Renogy. Um, this is our solar charge controller. So the battery runs into that. And then also running into that, but not uh, connected yet, is the solar panel wire. So this wire goes out. It goes to the outside of the box on, um, this is that 5 8 inch hole that I drilled before. It goes through a little gland and then out to a solar panel that's sitting right over here. So that'll get connected into the charge controller. And then the only other things that we're gonna connect in are our RET240, so that's our cell modem. And in this case, we've got our little Pi Zero connected up to a 2280, but you could just as easily put a Bobcat or a Rack V2 or whatever miner you wanna put in there. Um, if you did that, you'd probably wanna get a little bit bigger battery and solar panel, but that's not what I'm doing. Um, that's just what you could do. And the important things here are to see the general layout. So things to take note of is I'm gonna undo this uh, ethernet cable just so we get that out of the way. The other thing that I've got in here that I've got to have uh, for this little Pi Zero is a 12 to five, it's called buck converter. So this just takes it from 12 volts down to five volts. I'll move that um, off the screen for a little bit. Um, is important things to note that are kind of cool is here is that end type connector. Remember I just showed you that thing. So if we move this out of the way and get this thing up on its side, you can see there's our end type right there. I'm gonna hold that sucker up so you can see how big and thick that is uh, compared to my finger versus the little RPSMA or SMA connector, which are more like these guys right here. So here's our little RPSMA and then there was the end type. They both end in uh, what's this this guy, which is an IPEX. Um, and that's what connects to your miner. But you can see that this one down here is just a little bit bigger, a little bit more solid. So that's pretty cool. Um, then I've got the RUT240. You can see the two, um, 
cables for the cell antennas, and those antennas are the ones that came with the device. So uh, these two mobile ones here, I think this is the Wi-Fi. So these will get plugged into the outside. One of them will go um, horizontal, one of them will go vertical, just to make sure we're capturing as many different uh, radio signals as possible. And then I 3D printed this little bracket. If you know anyone who has a 3D printer, they can print you the same thing. Um, or you can find someone on the, the Prusa website who will probably print it locally for you wherever you are in the world. But that holds the RUT240 uh, nice and cleanly. And that's about it. You can see the perf board on there. I've only got two screws holding it in right now. I'm just kind of taking things out and putting them back. And you can see if you look really closely that I've got my holes marked for. I'm going to drill to attach this bracket to. I'm going to do the same thing for the Pi Zero and for the little butt converter. Um, when I put the batteries in, I don't actually um, hold these batteries down with anything. I just put it in there and leave it there because it's not like the case is moving a bunch. Um, what I will do is I've got some uh, command tape. So this stuff right here, let's see if I can get that to not shine like a MF. Um, there's a little 16 pound command tape. And what I'll do is I'll tape the, um, the wanderer to the battery, so they're just one unit, and that seems to keep everything pretty stable. Uh, when I transport, I'll transport this thing outside of the box, so that inside the box is basically empty, and there's nothing that's really gonna bang around. Everything inside the box will be secured, and then when I get wherever I'm going, I'll hang it up on my bracket, which you guys have seen. It's actually right there, uh, right next to the anvil. Um, and everything will be pretty straightforward. So that's pretty much the entire setup. Um, you guys have seen the whole thing now from soup to nuts, from bending the bracket to, uh, I just showed you drilling the holes. I got the right size holes here. Um, the only thing that you may do is you may not end up getting this N-type connector. That's not a big deal. Uh, you can use those those SMA connectors that I'd shown you before. And those are the ones that, um, that basically come with the with the hotspot, but this just does make it a little bit easier and cleaner. And there's basically one less cable to have because you're going directly to the outside of the case. So I think that's it guys. Uh, Off-grid miner more or less complete. I'll take some pictures when it's done, but it looks like every other off-grid miner that I've put together. So nothing uh, new or super fascinating there. Thanks for sticking around and watching this thing. And uh, yeah, check out the Gristle King blog, gristleking.com. Rock on. I'm out.